Welcome to our ComposeCast, where we discuss productivity, self-hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co-host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I am doing well over here. I'm excited for the format of today's episode. I know we have uh, something a bit different going on uh, with the interview, but I want to ask, how are you doing over there? Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited about this, uh, this little switcheroony here. I, uh, uh, I was, I was able to, uh, to grab an interview with, uh, with one of my buddies. So, so I will introduce that, uh, in, a in a while. Uh, but first we have a, uh, a couple of, of articles, uh, specifically about, uh, open source and how it's awesome and stuff. So <laughs> I, I that wanted we to, do. to lead off with, with Dan Brown's post here. Um, and I actually thought he had gone over this before, but uh, you know, it's, it's just a really well laid out thesis uh, as to how one contributes in to an open source project. Yeah, I agree. And really, I think he did post something similar to this that we covered a few months back. But the one thing I wanted to bring up, which I really liked, uh, was the way he described uh, the different requests. So, you know, filing a bug report, this is a bug. Uh, Filing feature requests or filing like a support request. But what I really liked is the way he requests users to request these feature, put in feature requests. He basically says... Uh, instead of making it super technical, for example, requesting, quote, add a header to add a header bar link to page X, end quote, instead of uh, provide faster access to page X from any location, since this would benefit Y. And I think a lot of us get hung up on the technical side with the technical jargon, you know, just add a header, add all the links versus, OK, we're adding this, but why? what's the benefit of it? What is the benefit of it? And so mm-hmm. I really liked he kind of brought that out that was one of the minor things he brought up but overall the post just kind of goes into how to contribute where to contribute where to start contributing well and that's the benefit of a plugin type system right specifically because then you don't have to necessarily wait for you know the core individuals to get through all the rest of their day-to-day and then then come back to something right it's it's uh it's the whole batteries included you know makes makes a a item very heavy and uh you know, not just heavy as as far as like it's a large package to download but you know it's it's a lot of overhead a lot of maintenance a lot of this and a lot of that but uh with with Linus's law um with many eyes all bugs are shallow right which is kind of the flip side of that that benefit to open source um and project zero um of google google's project zero uh recently kind of put that into numbers which was pretty cool to see Uh, so they went through uh different bugs uh that they had found um since uh january 2019 and tracked them per vendor so tracked apple microsoft Google, Linux, Adobe, Mozilla, Samsung, Oracle, and others, and said, you know, how many bugs? Um, uh, and and this is like vulnerability. These are like like how many how many critical vulnerabilities, right? Um, specifically bugs, but like you know these these things that could be exploited. You know when when were they fixed? Um, were they fixed during the grace period or did they exceed their their deadline and uh and how how long did it take to fix and if you go through the companies that i listed off there the only open source ones are linux and mozilla and i don't i don't even know if mozilla is open source pocket yet but um like linux itself is going to be the only truly open source uh project there uh, and actually, it got the best number. So it got the best uh, fixed by day 90 percentage at 96%, although barely nudging Google out. And Google had 95%. Um, they also had um, one that was fixed during the extended 
uh, grace ex, uh, or during the grace period, all right, that they gave it, or, or that exceeded the deadline in, in the grace period. Um, out of the 25 that were reported, 24 of those got the fix. Uh, and it took them an average of 25 days to fix. The next runner up, I believe, is 44. So, like, by a large margin, um, they were the fastest to fix bugs. So not only did they have the most bugs fixed, but they were the fastest to fix them. Um, so, so that, and yes, that is specifically, I believe, for the kernel, for the Linux kernel, like the Linux project. Um, but still, that is kind of proof in the numbers of how reliable open source can be. Now, it's not a magic bullet, right? It's it's not something that you can just sprinkle on any project and automatically you get security. Security. And, <laughs> and as, as much I'm as... I'm glad we were thinking yeah. along the same lines with that yeah. one. You, you, you can't just say, well, we're running on Linux. Why? <laughs> this should be secure. Yeah. Well, you yeah. can't just open everything and say you're secure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything is open source, therefore secure. Uh, that's not how that works. But uh, doing it intelligently, doing it correctly, doing it, building a community, building trust, you know, building that, that understanding and expectation does pay off. Uh, so it was really cool to see numbers be put behind that because you and I both know that. Uh, but yeah, being able to to say here's the proof, here's where it comes in full force. Here, here's where we can really see it paint out. It is 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 great to be able to have in in my back pocket. I found the uh, all these numbers very interesting, especially because of that grace period. I didn't realize that was a seven day mm -hmm. fix it in seven days, and that's your grace period before we disclose this. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird to see how many of these were not fixed during that grace period and resolved within ninety days. I mean, ninety days is three months. That's a lot of time mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. That is a, what a, a quarter? Mm -hmm. No, not a quarter. Almost a quarter of the year, right? Yeah, uh, that's that's a quarter. Yeah, ninety pretty, days. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah, pretty close. But, um, really, just if you think about <laughs> the, those types of bugs, I don't know if they were all zero days, but if you think of these types of bugs just being out there, I mean, ninety days is just a ton of time to exploit. So, really good to see the numbers were really low for Linux, and I think it just kind of goes to show and prove that you know what is it linus's law the more eyes on it the less it's going to be the more eyes on it the more secure it's going to be i think it's, it's something along those lines yes something along those <laughs> with lines many, with many with many eyes e e exactly <laughs> along those lines yes <laughs> but i think speaking of open source projects uh i we do have a few community and news updates around the projects we host and support um and I'm not going to, again, I've just kind of started to skim through these, go over these. Uh, if you really want to see more, they're in the show notes, but uh, I'll just cover the brief highlights here. Uh, WordPress moved to 5.9, which is Josephine. Uh, Sweet CRM 7.12.4 was released. Nextcloud 23.0.2, 22.2.5, and 21.0.9 is released. Uh, Canboard has another release out there. Firefly 3 has another release out there. And then this one kind of threw me off, Dollar Bar. Uh, version 15 was released. So I think the last episode, two weeks ago, I had discussed how their version 15 alpha was being delayed, but they have since decided that it is released now. So I don't know if it took them two weeks to just turn around an alpha into a final baked product, but uh, nonetheless, version 15 is released. And that is all I have for news and community updates. Uh, I know we have some of our own developments. Um, if you want to talk on those, some of those. Yes, as far as our composed developments, uh, just a lot of bug fixes here, mainly. Um, one, I, I believe I mentioned last episode, uh, where journal logs weren't shown up in the uh, Ubuntu uh, OS, um, which also caused deploys to fail because of cloud in it, right? So those those are kind of together. So we, I, you know, a simple restart of, of the system D journal D daemon fixes that so that's it that's it easy enough you know when we spin up a new vm just kick the service uh kick 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 the demon um 
But then in doing research, I also found that cloud init has its own command. So we don't have to parse the journal logs to see if it finished for, you know, like a specific text string or whatever. Uh, it does have a wait command. Uh, so, so cloud init, I think it's cloud init status wait. Um, and that will wait for cloud init to be done. And then once it's done, it exits zero or exits non zero. Nice. So I'm like, that's super handy. So we really were really nice. Yeah, I was, <laughs> was able to use that. Uh, it looks a whole lot better, uh, in, in an Ansible playbook. You know, I'm not, you know, parsing the journal and grepping and the, sure. It, it, it looks nice. It, it, it's, it's very clean. So I like that. Uh, the other bug fix I had, uh, it were that logical backups were being deleted all but one of them from my sequel. And this is, this was just the case of bash scripting, trying to get too smart for my own good. Um, cause when I, when I do a for loop, I did a for loop over, uh, dot slash asterisk, which is every file in the the directory. Right? Directory, yeah. However, that makes i, right, the, the, the loop variable, that makes i be dot slash file name, right? And the conditional I had to delete it is, you know, if the file name was, had a date that was older than the one I, I set being the cutoff, which is like 90 days. Which is all well and good until you take into account that the dot slash prepended to the file name in the loop variable meant that it was always marked as older than because the file name <laughs> itself it was came before the yeah so alphanumerically so it, it ended up treating all the files as old backups and, and getting rid of them. So uh, instead of doing that, um, there was actually some bash magic you can do where you can strip out a prefix to a variable as you use the variable itself. So you you do like a dollar sign curly brace, I being the variable in this case, and then um, uh, pound sign, pound sign, the prefix that you want to strip from it and then cur close, close the curly brace. So, so I was able to strip the dot slash from, from there. I, I like iterating yeah. over that dot slash because it does give me a, this is actually everything inside of this directory. I'm not just globbing everything. I'm, I'm specifically saying that this is going to be a, a path here and um, it just makes more sense, especially when I'm reading it too. It makes it a little bit more readable, but doesn't help if it's readable if it bites you in the butt because it's still biting you in the butt. So so that that got fixed, that got updated. Uh, that was cool. That was one of those bash trips tricks that you just like pick up along the way. And you know, I was I was I was actually having a hard time recalling it because I know that if you do a percentage sign, that's get rid of the suffix. Um, but I I had forgotten what the prefix was. So that bringing back that hash uh, really really helped me. Uh, and then lastly here we have uh, stable 4.1 is released. Now that is a misnomer because it's not entirely stable right now. Uh, the collection part of it is stable. Uh, what we're working towards is the portal side of it. Um, yeah. With the feature parity and the stability parity. I want to call it stability parity. How, do, how does that sound? The parity of stability. And once we have that in, I'll probably bump it to, to stable 4.2. Now it is it is functional. Uh, I've, I've been doing deploys. I've been doing testing with different scripts and, and functions and even migrations. Um, actually, I found uh, several things that needed updating when I went to do a migration, but uh, I was able to, to finally successfully kick one off. And it uh, works works like a dream. Uh, honestly, there's there's been a lot of efficiencies added. And it, it it really does go very smoothly. I was going to say, uh, the one thing to add with Stable 4.1, uh, we have a, one huge commit. <laughs> uh, well, I should say multiple commits for Portal. Uh, one PR, I should say, mm. for mm -hmm. Stable 4.0 to get that feature parity uh, to match the collection and the Play Branch version. So they're they're coming in, they're in the pipeline yeah. they're coming down yes, the they pipeline are. They is are. what yes. i'm going to say yes 